All right, legends, welcome back to the channel. We are back here at our lawn and garden renovation job where we recently put the turf down. Um, so we'll go have a quick look at that and see how the Sir Walter's doing. Um, so yeah, looking pretty good, as you can see. Um, growing in nicely, it's getting watered plenty by the homeowners um, and is probably actually due for a bit of a haircut today. So we might give it a bit of a trim, but we are basically back here to do the lawn renovation on this inside section so um so we'll walk in and have a look so as you can see here this is the current state of the lawn just quite thin very dry in a lot of patches um as you can see you've got some cracks forming which is very um telltale signs of very 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 dry soil so yeah and we'll have a look at a few weeds here to get out of the lawn but overall not too bad since they have been watering it a fair bit since i uh started looking after this place um it's definitely come out much more but yeah a little bit of thatch through there but as you can see real light but um but yeah so the soil here um not too bad, a bit thin. This place has never had a lawn renovation and it is on a mild slope. So retaining moisture in the soil is difficult. Um, yeah, but we'll sort that out today. So today we're going to get into the uh, lawn renovation by doing a, uh, getting a core aerator in here and pulling some cores out. Um, and uh, we've got some fur to put down and some top dress. So yeah so that's it for today um i'll do a little sort of lawn um how-to renovation sort of thing this is a little sort of diy video uh, for any homeowner um who just wants to do have a go at doing everything themselves so i'll sort of take you through the process that i do um we'll keep it nice and simple real straightforward and this is just sort of the basics of doing a lawn reno we won't go too deep into sort of cellular activity in the uh, plants your macro and your micro nutrients um, all that sort of stuff i mean we might brush over the macro nutrients um, with the fertilizers but we won't go yeah too deep on a cellular level in the plant but um yeah but anyway so let's get stuck into it and um, start the front lawn reno on this place Let's take a look at that, hey? So, oh, pardon me. So we pulled some cores out. Not super low, but that's all right. About, about an inch, inch and a half, some of them. Some of them not so much, but yeah, that's all right. That's as low as we need to go for now. Soil's not too dry, which is good too, but yeah, getting a good depth in there. So that's it so i did give it a bit of a light mow first so 
just be careful with Sir Walter. Um, it is a grass that spreads on top of the soil, so you need to be careful if you do have a Sir Walter lawn um, or a buffalo grass type variety, be careful that you don't scalp it down to your lowest mower on your setting as you may struggle for it to come back. It does need, remember, for photosynthesis and that, some leaf blade needs to be on the grass and it needs to be showing up through the soil for enable for it to get that sun and yeah, get that photosynthesis in to help with regrowth. So yeah, so, um, so I've done the core aerate. Now I'm just gonna give it a bit of a rake and rake the cores up. If your cores do break up a bit, don't worry about it. That is just soil going back into the ground. Um, but yeah, given that this soil isn't very high in nutrients and that, um, then uh, we definitely need to get up the most of the cores that are on the ground. That way we can put the fresh uh, fertilized soil, uh, top dress soil um, ready to go in. I've got a, a sandy loam today, um, or top dress as it's known as, um, which is a 70-30 mix, so 70 percent sand and 30 percent uh, dirt fertilized organic soil so um, so yeah just the mixture of both is best there is a lot of uh, people out there who do recommend um, different ways of doing it they can say just do completely with organic um, uh, organic top dressing um, just with like a thick sort of garden soil but it's not recommended um, but yeah the best is to go your sandy sandy base just as it doesn't sink through when you are uh, screening it over the top it does sink through the best um, but yeah you've got to sort of do a bit of research into your lawn variety Sir Walter has a bit of a fairly thick blade grass so um, so yeah it uh, it doesn't necessarily need a super sandy loam or top dress because again it is a thick blade grass so it'll drop through really easily but if you've got something like your cooch um, your cooch grass or your sort of tiff tough if you mow pretty low and your blade grasses are really thin and small then um, and you mow quite low then yeah you definitely need the more sandy fine top dressing to sink into those cracks you don't want piles of um, uh, piles of top dress sitting on top of your Bermuda grass um, or it'll just kill it um, it won't allow the blade grass to grow through it's not as Hardy as cooch in the matter, like I said, it grows on top of the soil. It doesn't grow via roots in the ground. Where your tiff tough and your cooches and that, they will spread via roots in the ground. So you can mow them really low and they will come back. But with Bermuda, uh, sorry, Buffalo, with Buffalo sort of Sir Walter and that, you can't. If you hack it right down to the ground, you will make it struggle and it may die. You definitely can't top dress on top of that either. Because again, there is no uh, blades of grass to come through and sort of help again with that photosynthesis and getting the lawn growing back through. So yeah, so just keep that in mind. Um, yeah, so check your lawn, check your uh, grass variety first. That is number one. Number two, you can do a soil test if you want to get that deep into it. Um, you can go to your local Bunnings, just buy a soil pH test kit and that will, um, really simple to use. Um, yeah, there's instructions in the box, but yeah, if you want to find out your pH of your soil and other nutrients in the soil, um, then that's a way to do so. Pretty cheap, I think about 20, 30 bucks from Bunnings will get you a soil test kit. Um, but yeah, you can test your soil first and know your grass variety, and then you'll know where to go through from there if you're doing a lawn renovation, um, what's most appropriate for your lawn variety. So, yeah. all right, so we've done the uh, core aerating. We will now um, give it a bit of rake up and a little bit of a haircut with the mower just to pick up any uh, any other thatch or stuff that it's picked up and then we can get into the fertilizing and the top dressing. All right. So just to note here too, you'll notice that I'm not doing this section here, as this section is going to be re-turfed like out the front. Um, yeah, it's completely 
dead there. There's no grass whatsoever. And instead of uh, top dressing over there and putting some new soil through and encouraging the grass to grow over that way, uh, that obviously takes a lot longer. We're just gonna um, get some pieces in and, and um, put, <coughs> pardon me, put some new turf down um, in that area. So I've ordered the turf, it just hasn't arrived yet. So we'll do the lawn renovation today and we'll come back tomorrow and lay um, come back tomorrow and lay that turf in that section too um, and that'll be the lawn done but yeah all right let's get into the uh, fur and the top dressing all right guys so today we are just using Scott's lawn builder buffalo um, with the nitrogen phosphorus and potassium of I believe 28.5 and 6 so yeah high in nitrogen as um, our buffalo uh, lawns need a high nitrogen rate and as you can see the prill is pretty small so yeah actually a good size prill um, for any lawn really whether you're fertilizing um, thin or thick leaf lawns um, yeah the prill on uh, I found on the Scots range are pretty good um, pretty much a same prill size all the way through I don't know specifically the prill size sorry but um, but yeah, um, it is, yeah, all the Scots. I've used pretty much all the Scots um, range of fertilizer for lawns and uh, all of them have been a good prill size. Um, but yeah, so today we're using, uh, yeah, the Scots Lawn Builder Buffalo Slow Release Lawn Fertilizer. Um, and again, an NPK of 28.5 and six of potassium. So, all right, let's get stuck into the fertilizer. Right guys, so the soil is down, um, as you can see, it is just not screeded in. So, uh, there's a few different ways to screeding when you've got such a small section like this, or again, you're doing your DIY on your own lawn at home, depending obviously on the size of your lawn. Um, but your average lawn here in Australia is around, you know, 500 square meters sort of thing. Um, but yeah, there's a house and that on that, so obviously the lawn's not 500 square meters. Um, but yeah, so you can get away with just using a handheld spreader. Um, if you see guys like Connor Ward or um, those guys with much bigger properties, it is far easier getting a drag behind one um, to drag it in, or you'll be there all day, uh, taking forever just to um, drag your top dress in or your sand. So anyway, there's a few different ways um, you have probably heard of of screeding your soil in. Um, I wouldn't really recommend them. One is with the back of a metal rake, as you can see here. Um, I wouldn't recommend it. They're too heavy um, and the width is not wide enough. Um, so when you're screeding with these, you can end up taking away more soil than what you want to. So then you have to keep going back and putting soil back that you just took out. They just aren't a good tool for you using to um, yeah, screed your soil in. The other one is a uh, just your plastic rake. Um, I wouldn't recommend that either. This rake I've had for donkey's years, just a cyclone from Bunnings, very popular rake here in Australia. Um, it's got this section here, as you can see on the back of the rake for um, doing sort of leveling. I don't use it, as you can see, it is not flat. It is a curve and you don't want a curved shaped tool when you are trying to level a yard or anywhere. Um, because it will not keep it level. So if you're a lawn lover and you're into doing a DIY on your own lawn at home, 
then I definitely recommend just spending the money. I think they're about 100 to 150 bucks from any landscape yard or from Bunnings and get yourself a proper lawn level tool. You can see my one here, um, had plenty of use, but I've had it for donkey's years. Um, but yeah, uh, you can find them anywhere on the internet. You can find them on Ben Sims Lawn's website. Um, and yeah, anywhere on the internet, all your local Bunnings, like I said, all your local landscape yard will have one too. But definitely worth the money. Just spend the money, get the tool, you have it for the rest of your life. And it'll be always there when you're ready to do your next renovation each year, um, come summertime and that. So yeah, so I definitely recommend using one of them and nothing else. Um, but yeah, so let's get stuck into screening this lawn in. Um, and yeah. There you go that was quick and easy again lawn level two tool much better um, and much faster so as you can see big difference now with it leveled in um, one thing i didn't mention and i will mention is i fertilized before i um, put my topsoil down so you will see other guys in other videos um, may do the opposite they might top dress first and then um, put their fert down after that i mean it doesn't matter really which way you go. I just go fertilizer first um, because you've done you've, you've you've done your core aeration. You've created those holes, um, and you're about to put fresh organic soil on top. So, I mean, I think it's better to put the fertilizer down first. That way, it falls in the holes, um, and it is between that old layer and new layer of soil you're putting in. So, as the water hits and it breaks down, it's instantly hitting basically. Um, in that area where the roots need to suck it up and get their nutrients um, and help it to grow. But again, each to their own. It's just what I think's better. Um, leave comments down in the bottom below um, on your reasoning why you might boo the other way. But again, each to their own, as long as you're getting furt down. Um, now, the other thing I'll mention too is you don't have to core air rate. If you're working on a budget at home or you know, there are people unfortunately now who have lost their job due to COVID um, and are working on a budget but still want to get their lawn fix, um, then yeah, I definitely, you don't have to core air rate. Um, it is recommended if you're doing a full lawn reno, but again, if you can't afford to hire a um, core air rater or purchase one, um, hiring in Australia, it's about 100 to 150 bucks for 24 hours to hire a core air rater um, or to purchase one, you're looking at around uh, two thousand to three thousand um, dollars for a, a core aerator um, but again yeah if you're working on a budget you don't have to hire a core aerator um, you can just not do that step um, or I mean there are cheaper options you can buy core aerators just handheld ones just like three or four um, plugs on them um, I mean they are far cheaper than purchasing one um, they're about about two to three hundred bucks to buy a good quality one um, but that's another option, but again, it'll take you forever to do a whole lawn um, with uh, just a handheld core aerator. But again, if you've got the time and, and you persevere, you can get it done handheld. Um, but yeah, the other option is uh, a cheaper option is just use the old fashioned pitchfork. Um, it again, obviously won't pull a core out of the lawn, which is ideal because it really pulls a nice big plug out of the lawn, allowing those nutrients and new uh, fert and you saw to go into them um, but you're still getting a hole in the ground and creating somewhere for the new soil and the fert to fall into so that is another option um, if you've got a pitchfork then yeah just use that um, but I'd recommend uh, watering heaps before you do it because if, if you try to bang a pitchfork into your soil and you haven't watered it in ages then it's not going to go down deep at all or if it won't go down you know five mil at all if you've got rock hard soil um, but again that's up to you but again it's just options if you don't have the budget for doing the core aeration um, then again you don't have to do it you can just go straight to um, straight to thatching with your rake um, pulling out any dead thatch you can, um, you know, treating the weeds as I've shown in another video, 
Um, I'll put the link up there and you can go click to that video about how to treat weeds in your lawn. Um, but um, yeah, you can just go straight to fertilizing and, and top dressing your lawn and then giving it a good water. Um, and you'll still get some beneficial, uh, beneficial stuff out of that in your lawn um, and you should see some good changes. So yeah, just another option if you don't have uh, the money or the budget to core aerate all the time. Okay? All right guys, last but not least, um, now that you've spread out your soil, applied your fur and done your core aeration is watering it in. So a very important step obviously um, is getting everything watered in, giving your grass a good drink and giving the soil a good soak just to settle in um, and fall into those uh, holes you've created. So we'll get the irrigation on here and get the uh, watering underway. Um, and yeah, that'll be, uh, that'll be it for the lawn reno here. So. Um, I may or may not film the turf laying tomorrow. I've already done the turf here video, so I don't really think we need another video on laying some turf over there. I think you uh, covered everything in that previous video. But um, yeah, so we'll get the irrigation on here, um, get that done, and then we're uh, yeah roughing it up for today. So um, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you learned uh, something new from this video. If you're not, hope you just enjoyed um, watching a good old lawn reno. Um, but yeah, so, oh, it's a hot day here in Brizzy. It was 31 degrees today, but thankfully there's been a breeze mainly all day. So yeah, a bit of a strange temps for spring here in Brisbane at this time in uh, Queensland, Australia, but um, summer's coming, so it's probably gonna be a bit of a scorcher, but um, at least it's getting everyone prepared for summer here in uh, Queensland. So yeah, anyway, thanks for watching again, guys. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, and uh, yeah, do like the video and uh, add some comments if you uh, have any questions or anything like that and I'll get back to you. But um, yeah, enjoy the rest of your day and stay safe. Thanks guys.